So hello, everyone. Um, we're very happy to have Lei Chen from Caltech, who will speak about the Nielsen realization problem. Hi, everyone. Um, today, I want to talk about Nielsen's real, uh, Nielsen realization problem. In particular, we'll give a new proof of a result of Markovich. So this is joint work with Nick Sauter. First of all, I want to introduce Nielsen realization problem. So Nielsen realization problem originally asked whether finite subgroups can be represented, uh, whether finite subgroup of mapping class group of a genus G surface can be represented as homeomorphisms. So what do I mean by that? So mapping, oh. mapping class group is the connected component of homeomorphism groups of a genus G surface. Orient, uh, so it's the pi zero of the orient, orientation preserving homeomorphism of SG. And so there's a natural homomorphism from homeomorphism group to, to mapping class group, which is the forgetful map. So I'll call this map pi G. And the question of Nielsen realization ask, if you can find for any finite subgrouping here, which is finite, then can you able can, can you find a, a lifting of G into a homeomorphism of SG? So if G is like for the mapping class group, G is only finite subgroup up to homotopy. And the question asks whether uh, you can make the up to homotopy to the actually uh, a finite group inside the homeomorphism. And this question is answered by Stephen Kirchhoff in 1983? And the answer is yes. So uh, originally for finite, uh, for a, a billion, oh, sorry, not a billion, for cyclic subgroup, this question is answered by Nielsen uh, is himself and also Fancho gave another proof. Uh, so this is the early study of this uh, Teich Miller space. And the proof of this is also using Teichmuller space and finite, finite group action on Teichmuller space. So the proof is a fixed point, is a fixed point argument. So they prove that the actions of finite subgroup on the Teichmuller space, which uh, I will not define in a talk. On the Teichmuller space always has a global fixed point. So once you find this global fixed point, then this global fixed point symmetry group is always a finite group. And that's how you prove um, you, you always has a lifting. Okay, so this is the original Nielsen realization problem. And so now I want to talk about a generalized Nielsen realization. So originally you asked about finite subgroup. So the generalized is asking all subgroup. So the question is which subgroup of mapping class group of genus G surface have lifting, so have realization, so have uh, there are two categories that we can ask this question, either homeo or defil realization. Um, so I, I can say that in here, it's not only just pi zero of homeomorphism group, it is also equal to pi zero of defilomorphism group. So the kinetic component subgroup, a kinetic component of both DFU and HOMEO are the same group, which are mapping class groups. So you can ask the same question for DFU as well. 
And so the generalized Nelson realization asks whether which subgroup has realization. So for example, you can ask, what about the whole group? Or the Torelli group, the Torelli subgroup, or a billion subgroup, or like maybe a generic group, a generic subgroup. Like you can ask the question in for many, many subgroups. And so the reason why we ask this question is because this is this corresponds to a uh, a topological problem. So this question corresponds to whether a surface bundle or SG bundle has a flat structure. So the mapping class group is the classifying group for surface bundle. Um, so the, the real meaning of that is every SG bundle uh, over a manifold or over a space X is one-to-one -one correspondence or up to isomorphism is one-to-one -one correspondent to um, the monodromy representation from pi one of M into the mapping class group. The, and this is up to conjugation. So if you give me a, a, a monodromy representation, so a homomorphism from pi one of x, sorry, from pi one of x to mapping class group, then I can give you a SG bundle over x, and this correspondence is one to one. So every every homomorphism determining a SG bundle, and so, so the reason for this correspondence is because the B uh, the classified space for SG bundle is B diff, but diffeomorphism group is homotopic to mapping. Oh, sorry, I should say. So the kinetic component is contractible. So the B diff is equal to B mapping class group. So this is the K pi one space. And so for K pi one space, the maps into a K pi one space is just determined by the pi one, uh, the, the map on fundamental groups. So we have this one to one correspondence. And so another correspondence is the flat SG bundle. So if you have a flat SG bundle um, over X up to isomorphism, this set is one-to-one -one correspondence with homomorphism from pi one of M into diffeomorphism of SG up to conjugation. Uh, so, uh, so from this, so you also have this forgetful map from flat bundle to bundle, or from homomorphism from pi one of m to uh, pi one of m into d field of x. Sorry, to d field of s g. Forget uh, like, and then you take uh, composing with the forgetful map into mapping class group. Then th these two both have the forgetful map, and the question of whether uh, surface bundle has a flat structure is to ask whether this is the image. So if you have a bundle in here, so it's determined in here, and then this bundle has a flat structure, if and only if this homomorphism is in the image of some homomorphism in here. So another way is um, a flat bundle, oh, an SG bundle, has a flat structure if and only if the homomorphism has a lifting under the forgetful map. <laughs> so this exists. So this is your original monodromy. And then you, you exist a, a lifting to diffeomorphism, then you have a flat structure. Okay, so uh, we have already answered this question for, not we, Kirchhoff has already answered this question for finite subgroups. So now I want to list some examples of um, previous results. So 
some positive and some positive results. The first is Kirchhoff's finite subgroup is always realizable. And this is an observation of Farb who say that, uh, who prove that abelian subgroup can always be realized. So this is observation. And we also know that of course, free group is realizable. But for example, we don't know, we don't know if there exists, if exists a surface subgroup that's not realizable. So this question is, we don't know whether there exists a surface bundle over a surface that does not have a flat structure. Um, we actually have some candidate, we have some candidates that we don't know how to, like, we don't know how to prove it. And uh, there are some partial results towards the proof where you, you kind of ask that you have certain symmetry, then you can prove you don't have a flat structure, but um, this problem is open. So we don't know whether there exists a flat, yes, surface subgroup that does not have any realization. And so for the negative result, the first people who study this problem, I think is Marita. So this question has been answered for diff two. So yeah, I'll just write diff to represent diff infinity. So this has no realization. And this problem is um, studied by Morita in 1989. And so in this paper to answer this question, he constructed his classes. So he's constructed something called MMM classes. Um, yeah, so he constructed MMM classes. It's also called Mumford. Oh. Yeah, so Mumford's conjecture actually conjectured that all of, all of those MMM classes gen, um, like generate the cohomology ring of mapping class group when G goes to infinity. Uh, so this MM classes are called kappa one, kappa two, and kappa three, and in the end. And Marita also proved that or K three, kappa three, kappa four, kappa five, or all of them are vanishing, vanished. And however, he also proved that all of them do not vanish on mapping. Oh, sorry, I should say that they vanish in diffeomorphism group. So this is a consequence of bot vanishing theorem for affiliation. And so, however, all of kappa one, kappa two, kappa three, they don't vanish on some mapping class group for some G. So uh, kappa I, all of them do not vanish on some G. So all of these classes can be defined on every genus. However, uh, they may, they may van not vanish. Of, of course, if N is very big, then kappa N do always vanish on certain G, but um, they do not when G goes to, when G goes to infinity, for example. And this result also has other proofs. Um, other proofs are given after Marita by uh, the first is Franks and Handel. Um, I think in 08 and then Basvina Church and Suto and, and Sauter and Shishi Ku in um, 2015. So even though uh, they give three different proofs and they prove can work for DIF1 of genus SG. So uh, Marita's proof only works for DIF2. Because to use the bot vanishing, you need regularity too. 
and all of these Frank's Handel and Baselina Church, Soto and Sauter, Shishiku only use diff one. So you only need to be able to take the first derivative. And all of them use a kind of a fixed point. So you, you first get some fixed point and then the regularity at the fixed point has some problem. And all of the problem actually coming from cohomology. Oh, so I forget to say that in here, uh, Marita show that all of these classes vanishing here, but they do not vanish on for some G in for mapping class group. And so there are some cohomology class in here. When you are pulling back, you do not uh, you do not see them in diffeomorphism group. So you cannot have n section. So this too imply that uh, no section can exist. So uh, I guess this is a standard tool to prove non-existing for sections, which is you find some cohomology class as your obstruction for existing of a section. And so these three methods, uh, they seem to be more dynamical, but they still use cohomological obstruction to obstruct, um, but they, they do it more locally. They kind of have a fixed point and then they show that there is some obstruction near the fixed point like it's still some cohomological obstruction. Okay, so the the problem about homeomorphism group is is more kind of more weird because of this uh, result of Thurston. So number two is for the homeo, for the case of homeo to mapping class group, it's, a, it's called Thurston's conjecture originally because Thurston proved a weird theorem. Um, I mean, proved a theorem that kind of um, kind of saying that the Marita's uh, Marita's um, uh, method of proving non-existence is not possible. So he proved that uh, the cohomology. So his theorem, his conjecture is that this pi g has no section. And it con in contrast with this conjecture is his theorem, which saying that the homology of homeo group is actually isomorphism to the homology of the mapping class group. So there is no homological obstruction. Lei, maybe you said this, are, are you assuming that G is bigger than one? G is bigger than one. You need G is bigger than one. I, uh, what is mapping class group? Oh yeah, you need G is bigger than one. Otherwise, otherwise this homeo of Taurus, uh, homeo of Taurus identity component is not even. You said it's not. I guess it's not true for G is not equal to one. Oh, so for G is equal to one. Right. Hmm. So somehow, um, somehow the homeomorphism group and mapping class group have the same homology for any coefficient. And so in 2007, Markovich gave a proof of this non-realizability. And so this is a, a deep dynamical argument. And the third problem, um, so the third problem for this negative answer mm -hmm. category. Could, could you say why G equals one is an exception? I actually don't know if it's an exception, but homeo of genus one surface is homeo of Taurus. Uh, this group is not, uh, this identity component is not contractible. So the identity component I think is like all the SO2. SO2 times SO2, that's right. what I get. Right. So there is some like something coming from the identity components. Is, is the general statement that uh, homeo viewed as a discrete group has the same homology as diff viewed as a topological group? And then just in for surfaces of higher genus, you can identify um, 
homology of mapping class groups with homology of diff because the identity component is contractible? Is that yes, yes? What, what's happening? I don't yeah. really know, but Sam yes. said yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, so another version is this braid group version. So for the braid group, I guess I'll call it PN to, to make them different. So the projection map from HOMIO of the disk fixing endpoints, this is a group, and the pi zero of this group is called braid group. I guess braid group has many definitions, and this is one definition. And the reason why we can transform this uh, braid group definition to the original definition is uh, kind of every map, every element in home of the disk fixing endpoint is homo. So if you don't fix this endpoint, it's actually homotopic to identity. And since now you are asking it to fixing endpoint, so you can find this homotopy. And this homotopy will give you a pass of, um, will give you a, uh, will give you a braid in your. So you, you just uh, write down this path, and you can see your braid. So this is the way to go from home of disk fixing endpoint to the actual braid group. Anyway, so uh, we have this projection from home to braid, and the question is whether this has a realization. And in the same paper. Um, Sauter and Shishiku prove that uh, PN has no realization in diffeomorphism. Oh, so in diff of endpoints. So in here, he asked the diff not only to um, to be the diffeomorphism, but also fixing a boundary of your, uh, fixing a tubular neighborhood, sorry, a tubular neighborhood of your boundary um, um, also. So yeah, like the question is, um, yeah, so they don't have, uh, PN doesn't have any realization in this group. And so again, this is a homological argument there's some homo homology class or some kind of homology. And, and then uh, in 2018, I proved that uh, PN has no realization in homeo. And I'm confused. Also I, I thought some proved there's, there's no, there is a section homologically. Uh, I think so too. <laughs> You said, I thought you said um, Baina and Nick's argument was homological. I said homological. I, I mean, it's not, it's not oh, a homology it has abstraction. I just mean the argument is homological. So it has a fixed point, And then near the fixed point, you are using some homological. Oh, OK. So it's, it's like using homology to get a fixed point. Okay. Uh, no, no. You already have fixed point in this case because the boundary points are fixed, and so you take a, you take any point on the boundary, and then you will get a map from. So basically, you are acting on the boundary. So near every point on the boundary, you can you you can see uh like how to say uh, uh you just fix on that component and you see that this group, uh, um. Yeah, so th this group has certain homological um, property called Thurston stability theorem. So Thurston stability is saying that if you are fixing the kind of the frame at a point, and also you fix the point, then this group is locally indicable. And so I guess I call this a homological kind of property. But it's, it's different than like Morita. No, it's not homological. It's not homological cohomology like abstraction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Local version of homological abstraction. Okay. Yeah. So I want to say that they actually didn't do any dynamics. It's it's more like just um, hom homology. Yeah. Yeah. So this is also a dynamical proof. 
Lay also n has to be bigger than something bigger than six in my paper but it, it only needs to be bigger than five for their paper so here is in here i need n is bigger than six yeah for, for their proof all they need is the bn uh has a perfect subgroup but for me i need six yeah okay uh so I want to now talk about why torsion is very important. So a lot of time, if you if your group has a torsion element, has a finite index of sorry finite order element, then the proof becomes much easier. The reason is, for example, Markovich uses this finite order element uses finite order in an, in an essential way because finite order has the following nice property. So it's called alpha strip. Alpha strip saying that um, Stephen, Stephen Kirchhoff told us that finite index, finite subgroup always has a homeomorphism or even um, holomorphic or diffeomorphism or uh, realization. And Alpha's trick talks about the other way. So he said, not only you have a realization, but you also have a unique realization. So it's saying that finite subgroup has a unique realization up to homotopy. Oh, sorry, up to conjugation. So uh, one way to see this is if you give me a group, for example, Z over P, and you ask me how you can act on R2, and then the reason, uh, the answer is the only way Z over P can act on R2 is by rotation. So this is like always by rotating around O, around some point O, by two pi over p. So this is the unique action of z over p on R2. So similarly, any finite subgroup can always just act like in one way if you are fixing the homotopy type of this finite element. So we have this rigidity of finite elements. So using this rigidity, we can somehow all of these finite elements cannot be compatibly stay on um, on, on, on the homeom as homeomorphism. So this is the biggest conjecture in this uh, whole set of problem for now, because we haven't even tackled this problem yet. So the question is, is just you ask a little bit uh, like smaller group, is finite index subgroup, subgroup of mapping class group of SG always not realizable, always, you know, either unrealized, always not realizable. Uh, I guess we hope this answer should be no, like should not not be able to realize, but we do not have a proof because we don't have a way to tackle this torsion free version of this problem. So this finite index subgroup is usually torsion free. So this problem remains to be a, a hard problem. And so last year, um, we gave a little, we, we gave a result of this uh, in the special case. So in last year, we proved that Torelli group, uh, which is a torsion free uh, influence, uh, how to say, torsion free infinite index subgroup. But uh, if you contain Torelli group, then you will contain all the congruent subgroup of mapping class group. So you, you, you have a big chunk of uh, finite index subgroup has been solved. So Torelli group always have no realization in homeo of SG, but you ask the volume preserving. So we are 
adding this one condition for the homeome. So Torelli group has no realization in volume preserving homeomorphism of the genus or error preserving homeomorphism of the genus. So, however, we do not manage to prove this for all finite index subgroup because there are also a big chunk of finite index subgroup that do not contain the Torelli group. Okay, so uh, today uh, I will talk about the proof of this. Um, so I will so I will talk about my joint work with Nick Sauter, which gives a new proof of Markovich's result using torsion. So today, today's goal is to give a new proof of this 2007 Markovich's result. So his result is, his proof is very, very difficult. And uh, uh, a lot of dynamics like shadowing lemma and uh, like also complex analysis. But for, for, for us, we give a new proof just using this alpha trick. So the, the only thing we use is alpha's trick and we're able to give a completely elementary proof. So today we'll give a new proof of his results. So the outline of today is firstly, I will translate the problem, a translation of the problem into a fixed point, a global fixed point problem. Yeah. So originally we have a problem about realization of homeomorphism and I will translate it into a problem asking whether a, a global fixed point exists. And the secondly, we are trying to uh, find a way to prove the existence by the existence of a fixed point. a fixed point by finding finite, some special finite index, oh, sorry, some special finite elements. And I guess thirdly, I'm just going, going to check that this finite element alpha, alpha G, checking alpha G works. So this is the outline of the rest of the talk. Is first I want to give you a translation of the problem, and then I will try to finding some elements to prove that there exists a global fixed point. And then thirdly, I want to check my element works. Okay, so the first, let's start the translation. So mapping class group um, is the pi zero of homeomorphism group. Uh, so you always have a um, map like this to mapping class group. And then, so for any, so SG, there's a universal cover of SG from disk. So by uniformization theorem, any SG has, you know, every SG, you give it a holomorphic structure. And then the universal cover also, I should give it a hyperbolic structure. And the universal cover is the is always the hyperbolic plane, so hyperbolic plane cover SG, and so I'm giving this Poincaré disk model. So this is the disk, and then so every homeomorphism of SG you can lift lift it to the disk. So I will have a new group called a homeo Twitter of disk. So this is. SG, uh, pi one of SG equivariant. So this is, if you find a lifting, then this element is always pi one SG invariant because you have this deck transformation uh, and then the deck, deck group should be like, like compatible with your lifting. So, and the kernel is pi one of SG. So you have, uh, so this group is this equivariant, yeah. Homeo up to pi one of SG. So this group also lands into, so this is a subgroup inside the homeo of the disk. So we form this short exact sequence from pi one of SG. So this is the deck transformation. 
into homeomorphism disk uh, theta, which is the equivariant homeomorphism, and into the homeomorphism SG. Uh, so any homeomorphism SG has infinitely many lifting, which are changed by the deck transformation. And now I'm forming the pi zero of this group. So, so in here, I will have the pi zero of homeo of disk twitter. And also pi zero of pi one of SG is just pi one of SG. So I will be able to form another short exact sequence uh, using, uh, using pi zero. And so now you may have a question, which is, okay, what is this group? What is pi zero of homeo of disk? Um, so if you are like familiar with mapping class group, this, this exact sequence is called a Berman exact sequence. So this is called a Berman exact sequence. So this part you need to actually prove that pi zero of mapping class group, a uh, pi zero of homeomorphism group is exactly mapping class group of SG fixing a point. So this is also pi zero of diffeomorphism of SG fixing a point. So, um, um, so the reason is because D2 is contractible. So even though for this group, you don't fix any point, but you can always drag a point to, to your original point by uh, connecting them with a path. And after you're connecting it with a path, since D2 is contractible, this does not depend on how you drag it back. So you get a well-defined map in a uh, diffeomorphism fixing point. Okay, so this is the Berman exact sequence. And so, uh, and this, this guy is just lifting. And so the claim is, uh, so I guess this is a claim, non-trivial claim that you need to prove, which is the pi zero of the lifting, lifted homeomorphism group is equal to the mapping class for fixing a point. And so now the problem is changed into, uh, so I guess this is called pi G and this is called pi G tilde. So the problem about lifting of pi G is equivalent to the lifting of pi G tilde uh, while your, your pi one of SG staying the same. So uh, pi G has lift, sorry, pi G has a section if and only if pi g tilde has a section. So all your, all your like a focus now um, changed into pi g tilde. So um, why pi g tilde might be easier to study is because pi g tilde actually the, the image lent into homeo of the disk and the homeo of the disk is somehow easier to, to look at than homeo of the surface. So now we're tr first or firstly translate this problem into a problem about pi G tilde. So the new, so the new, the actual theorem that we prove is the following. So the new result, I guess, the new statement is we prove this theorem one of transalter is any action of mapping class group fixing a point. So this is the um, lifted, li pi zero of the lifted homomorphism, homeomorphism group. Any action of mapping class group fixing a point on R2 has a global fixed point. So why this problem can imply our original problem? Because if you look at this uh, short ex this two short exact sequence, you will see that uh, if this has a has an M, has an action, then this has a section. Then this acts on the disk by through this action, and the action on the disk always has this deck transformation subgroup, which do not have any global fixed point. So this action is is fixed point free. However we are able to prove that any action of this group on R2 has a global fixed point. Um, yeah, on D2 or on R2 are the same. So any action by homeomorphism on R2 always has a global fixed point. So this contradicts to our original construction. So the construction coming from a section 
does not have any section. Um, so this result can also be generalized. We also prove that the action on, yes, yeah, so some remark is, first of all, this argument also works for action on R3. You always have an invariant line. Um, even though this generalization do not give more, more results about Nielsen realization problem. And so secondly, I want to say this potentially give you a new way to prove Nielsen realization for other subgroup. So because, so if we can prove, for example, if Torelli group acting on R2 always so you don't need to prove it X on R2 always has a section. You just need to prove that the extension, so you already, you already have an action of IG1 on the boundary. So there's a boundary. So this is the disk. And so you already have an action of mapping class group into homeo of the circle by restricting, so you have a homeomorphism on the disk and then you're restricting the action on the circle. And it is, it is actually a homeomorphism of the circle. So this is called, I get, is this, I forget how to, who to attribute, but this is the canonical action. So um, this is kind of special, this is a canonical. And it's unique, there's a unique action of this group on circle. And so this canonical action, you just ask whether the canonical action has any uh, extension into the exterior, ex, uh, interior. And also the, the question is whether this extension actually satisfy our property that it needs to co be compatible with the deck transformation. So if you can prove like the global fixed point result for other subgroup, like if you can prove, I, for example, IG1, this is Torelli group. Acting on disk also has fixed point. then I guess this implies that IG1 has no realization or IG has no realization. Um, so this is what I mean by, it kind of gave you a new way to prove a uh, Nielsen realization problem, even though I do not, I do not know how to prove for other groups, whether the global fixed point result can work. Okay, uh, so now I want to prove theorem one. So proof of theorem one of this global fixed point theorem. Okay, so you have a subgroup inside the home of the circle and you're asking whether this group uh, can be extended to the interior. So you have a subgroup inside the home of the circle and you're asking whether ask whether G can be extended into the disk, into the interior. And so now if we're just asking the same question for home of the circle, let's see what we can get. So the sample result is any action of home of the circle uh, on disk has fixed point. So how do you ever prove um, any action always has a global fixed point? And the argument for this is, um, the reason is SO2, yeah, the proof or the reason is SO2 is a subgroup of homeo of the circle. So this is, uh, this, is this rotation group. So the rotation group has like all of this finite order elements. You can use this to prove SO2 has a global fixed point. SO2 has a fixed point, I'll call it O. And then, so if your SO2 has a global fixed point, then any element that commute with something SO2. So if F is in SO2 and G is in homeo of S1, so that FG is equal to GF, so they commute. And then if you're commuting with an element, then you will prove, uh, you, you will fix the fixed point of the uh, fixed point set of your element. So this, you can use this to prove G 
G also fixed O, because O is the unique fixed point of every element in SO2. So using this, now you're doing an algebraic computation to show that the centralizer, so this is centralizer of every element in SO2. So this is a big set. And then you use all of this element to generate a subgroup. And this group is actually, so this is a claim you need to prove. So CF, so centralizer of every element in SO2 actually is equal to homeo of S1. So F not equal to one. So any non-trivial element in SO2 actually, actually the, the centralizer generates the whole group. And so this, using this argument, you can show that homeo of S1 fix O. Yeah, fixes O. So the proving of the global fixed point is you, you first prove some elements has a global, some subgroup has a global fixed point. And this global fixed point is unique. So it's just a single global fixed point for every element. And then you, you're trying to prove that their, their centralizer generates everything. So that's how you prove this. Uh, so we will prove this, we will show the mapping class group fixing a point subgroup has the same property. So you will be able to find some, uh, some subgroup that has this, um, so that their centralizer generate everything. So now I want to search for, for the um, subgroup A inside mapping class group so that the centralizer of element in A, oh, so that this guy is everything. So I will actually find a cyclic subgroup. Um, and so for every, um, I want to say this group is finite. I want to find a finite subgroup. And so finite subgroup, since you are finite, so every element will just fix a point. So yeah, so as I said, finite abelian. So I'll find a finite abelian subgroup. Finite abelian action on R2 has a global fixed point. Because finite action on R2 is always just rotation. So it always just have a global fixed point. And this global fixed point is actually also unique because it's a rotation group. Okay, so for example, for genus is equal to two. So for genus is equal to two, mapping class group fixing one point is actually just a cover, like a, uh, uh, sorry, it's, it's like covers B661. So what is B61, the braid group of six point and also fixing one point of the sphere. And the reason, hmm. oh. and the reason is because the genus two surface has a hyperbolic, uh, has a hyper elliptic involution that fixing six point and so, and then you are actually uh, fixing another point. So. So there's an identification of this, which is a two, two by one map from mapping class group two point into the braid group fixing six points. So the, it's the mapping class group of the sphere fixing six point and one point. And in here, you have this element, you are fixing this one point and you're putting the six point uh, on the equator. And then the rotation by, this is called alpha two, is this rotation by, uh, two pi over six. And we have a claim that this element satisfy our property. So alpha two square centralizer of alpha two square and centralizer of alpha two cube, this generates the whole group. So similarly, you can, so using this property, you can prove that mapping class of two one, you have this alpha two in here that satisfy our centralizer of 
you know. So centralizer of this alpha two, alpha two generator order six group, and this centralizer of every element in here is just centralizer of alpha two square and alpha two cube. So all of this already generate that generalize this group. So it satisfy our the property that that we want. And so for genus three. We can also find certain elements by just this is your 12 gum and then your rotation by 2 pi over 6. Uh, so 12 gum can represent a genus 3 and you have a global fixed point in the middle and also you have a global fixed point on the side. So you will have two global fixed points. Oh, sorry. I want to say this element alpha 3. So this is alpha 3. And alpha 3 has two fixed points on S3, so on genus three surface. And so the alpha three all also satisfy our property. So C of alpha three cube and C of alpha three uh, square, they generate um, mapping class group fixing, uh, fixing a point in genus three surface. Okay. So we find this low genus example, and they already showed the, the theorem for genus uh, for like low genus. And for higher genus, uh, yeah, this is number two. So for higher genus, we are going to glue all of this low genus example. So uh, this also, alpha two also has two global fixed point. Oh, sorry, has two fixed point in S2. So for higher genus, because all of this example has two global fixed points, so I can blow up one of the global fixed points and connect them together. So in the end, you have one global fixed point, you have another, and then you are blow back, a uh, blow up, and then connect it with another genus three. For example, genus two and genus three, you can get a genus five. And then if you are doing this, you can get a genus seven. So you just glue all of them together. You get your elements alpha G inside mapping class group of genus G. And uh, so the last, um, the last thing we need to prove is this alpha G actually works for any genus. So this is a um, harder like uh, algebraic argument that you need to do about mapping class group. So you need to know which elements uh, generates the mapping class group. And then you need to show that um, kind of this alpha G, the centralizer of alpha G already is enough to generate the mapping class group. So the last part is a, uh, is a computational problem. And then in the end, in the end, the general result is that this alpha G satisfy this property. So the centralizer of every element in the alpha G subgroup, they actually is everything. And so using alpha G, we can, so then alpha G action on R2 has global fixed point O, and you can use this to prove O is fixed by mapping class group, by the centralizer formula, and so we are able to prove that any action of mapping class group has a global fixed point. So this can imply the non-realizability of mapping class group. Yeah, thank you. Let's thank Lei. Great, so are there any questions or comments? I have a question. Um, uh, for the case of diffeomorphisms, um, the if you fix a point, um, am I right that the uh, subgroup, the surface subgroup in the mapping class group of a surface of genus G with one mark point, cannot be lifted to diffeomorphisms? Cannot be lifted to the diffeomorphisms. Uh... I mean, inside the mapping class group of a surface of genus G with one mark point, you, you have this surface subgroup. Mm. And 
Yeah, the surface subgroup is the by that deck transformation, right? Uh huh. So the deck transformation is in diffeomorphism. It the deck transformation is in diff is everything is in diffeomorphism. And the mapping class group actually on the boundary cannot be in diff. Yes, yes. I'm asking uh, about your realization problem. Oh. That whether the sub the surface subgroup in the mapping class group mm. um, can be lifted to um, diffeomorphisms or homeomorphisms. Let's. Uh, mean for this group. For this particular group, yes. You mean whether this action in here can be lifted to the diffeomorphism? Yes. It, it, it is the diffeomorphism. It is in the diffeomorphism group because this is the deck transformation. So it's in PSL2R. Uh, so it's a subgroup. So this is in PSL2R. So this is how you determine your hyperbolic structure. You have a you have an pi one of SG acting on the hyperbolic plane by diffeomorphism. <laughs> Yes, so it's, uh, but but I but I don't mean to the uh, a cover. I mean, say diffeomorphism of a surface of genus G with one mark point leaves over the mapping class group, right? Oh, and then you can ask whether um, whether the surface subgroup lifts to uh, diffeomorphism of a surface of genus G or homeomorphism of surface of genus G with one mark point. Uh, sorry, can you say your question again? Yeah, so in this um, diagram that you have, uh, let's just think about the uh, right column. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about the left column. Um, then in the middle, you have the mapping class group of surface of genus G with one mark point. Mm -hmm. And um, one can ask the question that whether the subgroup of this mapping class group uh, can be realized as a diffeomorphism or homeomorphism of surface of genus G with one mark point. Oh, oh yes, you can ask the same question. Yes, so this problem, uh, so all of this problem, the answer is, I believe this one in diffeo is answered, but for the homeo, for the diffeo, it's the same. So you, you ask whether you have realization in here or in, you mean, in homeo of SG1. That's your question. Yes. Um, do I, can I answer this for homeo of S1? But for diffeo of SG1, it's actually easy. So this is this church, either church, uh, best Basvina church Soto or Shishiku, they both can answer this, I think. So, but for uh, Homeo, does does your method um, help to um, to say that, for example, the surface subgroup does not lift to the Homeo? For the Homeo, I think for the Homeo, I can prove it, even though it's not written, it's not written down. But it's the same proof for the braid group. I prove this for the braid group. Oh, sorry, in here. So this theorem, it introduced a method to prove such problem for, uh, yeah, I think we can prove this for genus two. So if you can prove this for n is equal to six, then you can also prove it for genus two using the same method. And if you can prove this for genus two, you can prove it for any other genus by uh, by localizing the problem onto genus two. So this paper introduced a way to localize your problem onto a smaller genus surface. So you can you just need to prove it for one genus, and I think you can easily prove it for genus two using this braid group, you know, uh, localization. So uh, yes, the problem for homeo is also can be known. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, it, it is easy. Yeah, it is it is like using this paper's method, you can prove it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. And the, oh, the reason is also, the, the reason we can prove it is also because mapping class group fixing a point also has some finite index subgroup. And without those finite index subgroup, it's, uh, it, there's no way to, to, to do this problem like right now.
<laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions? I I have a question. Um, I didn't understand uh, why how you deal with the possibility that a centralizing element may permute the fixed points of of the finite order element you consider. Uh, you mean here? How do I deal with the fact that the centralizer can commute? Sorry. Yes. I mean. Um, Take alpha g. I, oh. I I mean I didn't understand this 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 step. Oh, so this alpha g has some fixed points and in the examples that you discuss, um, alpha g has two fixed points, right? Alpha g has one. Th alpha g. Oh, oh that, that's why I I want to say this alpha g element has two actions. So first of all, uh, alpha g is an element in mapping class group so it acts on sg like s2 so yeah so i should write in here so alpha g is an element in mapping class group fixing a point so it it acts on sg so this is one action and this action has two fixed points and yeah to be more clear there's another action called roach alpha g so uh, or the section so it's there's a section of alpha G. So this act on R2. So if you have a lifting, then you act on R2. And then this action only has one fixed point. So because the action on R2 always has one global fixed point because it's just the, the rotation, it's the rotation by Two pi over six because it's an order six element, so it is just the rotation two pi over six. So uh, this two global fixed point is used to glue all the action because you need the action to have two global fixed point to be able to glue like a for like genus two glue with a genus three give you a genus five. So in that step, in that step, we need a two global fixed point. Okay, okay. Now, now I understand the entire argument. Thank you. Yeah, I was not, I, I also find that I have this problem of these two actions and I didn't, I was not very specific. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, let's thank Lei once more. Thank you for your invitation and your listening. <laughs>